Hey guys, welcome back to Dew News. I am your host, the King of Dew, here to take you to the moon. Here we go, boys. All right, first things first, we got, oh, and gals, I got some amazing gals watching this channel. I uh, follow a few of them on Reddit and on Steemit. Um, you guys are awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dew News. Let's get right to it. First things first, I wanted to respond to a lot of questions around BAT's uh, long-term plan in regards to um, Chrome extensions. Everyone um, is kind of leaving the same questions in a lot of my videos. I have a five-part series if you haven't seen it. I got a five-part series. It's a playlist. Um, it'll be at the end of this video. You can click on it to go see it. And I cover basic attention token ICO, which is coming up this next week. And I strongly encourage that you watch it. If you haven't got a professional opinion on it from someone that's in advertising, uh, that's me. Uh, it's my professional opinion on its uh, space in the advertiser world, on the publisher side, and on the digital marketing side of things. Um, we're all users, so we all see it from that perspective. And that's where this question is coming from. A lot of people are saying, well, hey, King Adu, you're saying that you know it's all about the browser. It's all about everyone downloading Brave. Um, and that's still true because if you actually go and you read the fine print um, about what you can and can't do with extensions, one of the critical things you can't do um, is uh, add a layer of tracking. They can't take information on what you're doing um, in your browser and etc. Um, and it's very clear in the terms um, of service that this is not allowed. Um, and so you, a lot of people um, keep believing that that's what they're going to do, etc. Now, they could do it, but it won't actually deliver the same type of technology, analytics, metrics that they're looking for. So keep that in mind. Make sure you guys uh, understand as well as um, I haven't seen anything with the word patent on anything that they're doing, right? What is stopping Google from doing the exact same thing tomorrow? Right? If, if they get a shred of success, they could get pounded into the ground, right? Um, because advertisers are already on that platform um, and it would be a no brainer, right? So if BAT proves some success, there's potential they have a massive competitor just waiting. So just something to keep in mind. We all know that secretly Google's doing something with blockchain. We don't know what, but just keep that in mind. Um, keep it on the, you know, it should be a critical element that you're looking at, right? Um, with any investment is um, what other competitors are out there? What are the risks? Uh, are they really focusing on something that's really unique, really different? Um, and so just take that into account when you're determining whether you want to invest or maybe how much you want to invest. Okay. Uh, next um, is actually a pretty cool article that came out um, and I wanted to share with you guys because it's something that I've been talking about on this channel for a while and that's the concept of anonymous cars and Toyota basically is prototyping on the Ethereum blockchain um, a similar type of uh, concept as Uber um, except that you'll be able to lease your car so I like to think of it as more like an Airbnb um, rather than Uber to where I, are, I, have, I own a car and I could lease it to you only for the time that you're going to use it. You'll be insured for that time, etc., etc. Um, all your personal information and things of that nature will be on the blockchain, and that way everything is secure and I can feel safe. And that lowers um, liability for like the insurance companies. Insurance companies are going to get behind it and support it because of that. Um, and so uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool technology. I would uh, tell you to go take a look at it for sure. Read some articles on it. Um, so yeah, uh, just a quick quote uh, to give you guys an idea about what it is. Um, this is directly from the press release in regards to... Um, they actually stated this um, uh, basically kind of as a representation of their, their stance on we're part of the Ethereum Alliance, and essentially, um, this is what we want to do. We want to do this proof of concept prototype for car sharing. So this is their statement in the press release that came out. The blockchain can store data about the vehicle's usage and information about vehicle owners, drivers, and passengers. 
So that's really interesting right there is that even the passengers, right, to make sure that everyone's insured and everyone's safe. This profile information can help validate a smart contract between two parties plus manage payment of services between them without a financial intermediary. That's hard to say right now. <laughs> without someone in the middle, so no middleman. Therefore, saving transaction surcharges the system also provides connectivity to the vehicle functions with remote locking, unlocking, engine startup and shut off. So essentially what's going to happen is um, Toyota is either going to put all these cars out into the world themselves or they're going to let me buy one. And um, essentially because I'm buying one, um, I will have an easy plug and play into this ecosystem. And I then can lease my car to you. And maybe my uh, monthly payment is paid by you. It's just deducted, right? How cool is that? So if some month I'm just like, you know, I don't really feel like paying my car bill. I'm just going to ride my bike to work for a week. I'll lease it to you. You're good to go. Go on vacation. Do what you want with it. You're fully insured. And that's really exciting. So those are the things that we've all dreamed about. I've also dreamed about, you know, how someday... Um, a city will just have cars everywhere and we can just walk up to it, get in the car and drive. Um, we can use an app to reserve it before we get there so we have confidence that it's going to be there. Um, have the confidence that when we that we can uh, like park it, go inside uh, at the store and it'll still be there when we come back, right? Like reserving it for a short amount of time. That way you can go to point A to point B and then back to A without someone coming and grabbing your car. Um, things like that. Um, there is um, an app out right now that essentially does something like this. However, the blockchain technology, as stated in, in the quote, and as I said before, because we have that transparency and full visibility, we're going to get a lot of uh, insurance premiums lowered to help support this concept, which is critical because to most insurance companies are going to see this as high risk. There's also the possibility that Toyota will actually back in uh, all the financing and insure it themselves, which will give them a huge head start against any uh, competition. That all being said, I think it's very, very real right now that what's happening in the car industry. Sales are declining right now. Um, usually they start heading upward in the summertime, but right now uh, lots of car companies are struggling. And uh, Tesla is obviously exploding as far as... not. They still aren't selling as many cars as these other guys, but um, the public valuates them at basically more than Ford, which is crazy um, because people believe in Tesla, what they're doing in the future and where they're headed. And so people are putting a high price on that. I think that we're going to see a mad dash uh, and a, ma a massive wake up call to the industry. Some real disruption is finally starting to happen. You see Toyota making some big strides. I expect um, Honda to make some uh, some big news soon. Um, they could actually join. There's going to be another announcement soon about other partners joining the alliance coming up next month. They could actually join as well. But I could also see them being a Japanese company uh, partnering with NEM. Uh, that's, that's a possibility. But um, I'd be looking for some of those forward-thinking companies from... Uh, from countries that have uh, more innovation than we do um, here in America as much as we like to think we have a lot of innovation if you go to Japan you probably have your mind blown <laughs> when it comes to what innovation really means so um, be looking for that be looking for some big announcements in the next year from Honda about what they plan on doing because I'm, I'm very confident they're not sitting idle you know they're a leader in a lot of robotics and things like that so just keep your eyes peeled for that because that's going to be big news um, that will span across the globe. Um, so it's really exciting. Okay, uh, other things I want to talk about. Coinbase uh, actually reported the other day when we had the big spike um, that they had 40,000 new user users register that, that same day. So that was like an all-time high for them, um, which is incredible. Um, I was, you know, I, I follow the new addresses and things like that that are created um, on Etherscan. I'm always tracking to see what's going on to get a, get a sense of if we're uh, accelerating faster or if we're leveling off, things like that. 
Um, always, always trying to keep a temperature gauge on that, but 40,000 new users is pretty crazy. Uh, to give you guys an idea of how many people that is, in the United States alone, we have a roughly uh, 19,000 cities. Okay, so essentially, two people in every city in America is the is the, the equivalent of who signed up. But of course, uh, Coinbase is a international company, so we're talking around the whole world. So anyone who's trying to tell you that this is a bubble is a complete, completely, they just don't know what they're talking about. As simple as that. It's way too early to be a bubble. Uh, it you know if you go back to when the internet was exploding and the internet bubble basically everyone you knew had an internet stock of some kind they were putting their money in right uh, it wasn't uh, you know just maybe a 40,000 people around the world so still still small numbers but still all-time highs I think that uh, you know in the next wave that number could double or triple and I think in the final wave they may have they may see a day where they hit a quarter of a million in one day. That's real. Uh, that's that's when we start making some dents. If we can keep that consistent every single day um, and start turning that into millions and then turn that, hopefully someday, one billion. Who knows? Maybe there will be a billion Ether addresses. Uh, I have a lot of Ether addresses myself uh, just because of all my machines and miners and things like that. Um, and on mobile devices, etc. So, you know, it's not a direct indicator. Let's make sure that, that, we're, that we're clear on that. It's not a direct indicator of, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So just keep that in mind. However, Coindesk, um, this was registered users, so these are individuals. So don't get that confused, um, the difference between new addresses and uh, registered users on a platform. So. Um, we all know that um, both uh, Polonex and Bittrex reported uh, record-breaking numbers recently, and um, this is just getting going. We're just getting warmed up, guys. Really, really exciting stuff. Um, lastly, I just wanted to bring you some fun fact news. Um, I, uh, I've been following on ENS a bunch of different uh, things that I want to bid on myself. Um, Maybe one or two I might hold on to, see if they're worth something someday, but um, they're, they're kind of niche. I don't know if anyone's going to bid against me on them. Um, you know, a couple where I just want my name and things like that, so I expect to get those cheap. But um, if you don't know what ENS is, essentially it's where you can go and get an extension, a, a dot .eth, so you could have like, you know... Um, google.eth and what it does is it changes your ethereum address to google.eth instead of all those long mixed up characters and letters and no one could ever remember them um, there's a lot of value here in that I can just tell you hey send me money to google.eth right so that's essentially what the naming system is and you can go and bid on these um, and they will connect to your address that being said, I wanted to bring you this fun fact that um, ETH, Ethereum, Ethereum.eth, so the actual word was Ethereum.eth, it uh, basically sold for 1,222.88 Ether. That is a lot. Um, the highest bid, though, was almost double. It was... 2,090.847 ether. Basically 2,100 ether, guys. So do the math on that and the price of what ether is today. Someone spent $334,000 to own ethereum.eth. Wow. So that's what they bid, but they only pay what the second highest bidder bids. And the second highest bidder was much less. It was uh, 1228 And so that comes out to uh, basically $200,000. So that's what it sold for. Someone was willing to pay 130000 more than that. But that was the final price. So anyhow, guys, that's absolutely ridiculous. I thought you guys might want to know that. You, if, if you believe in Ethereum, my question to you is, do you believe in it that much? Because somebody does. 
Someone with very deep pockets believes in this stuff more than I ever could imagine. I don't know what they're going to do with that address. Is it, is it just to be like a trophy on a mantle to say that you own it? I have no clue, guys. It's blowing my mind. Um, anyhow, so that's all I got for you right now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. I may be back later this evening, but it is beautiful here. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend wherever you're at. Um, if you're on the road or traveling and you're listening, I hope you're, I hope you're being safe out there um, and having a good time. So, as always, thumbs up, likes, shares, all those things. Go to Steam, upvote me, follow me, um, that whole shebang. So, I really appreciate your guys' support. The channel is going out of control, and I really, really appreciate it. And I uh, uh, appreciate your guys' response to everything going on with crypto and, and the uh, Coindesk situation. Man, that news blew up. It's all over Reddit. And I hope, uh, I hope you guys get a, get a chance to go show him your support. Um, but um, I'm not, I'm not going to say who was right or wrong in my personal opinion. I just know that um, he needs some support right now, guys. He, you know, he worked really, really hard on that stuff. Um, and even if he would be at fault legally or, you know, I don't really know because I don't know the laws, but even if he, if he were and things like that, he still poured his soul out for us to bring us that content. I got to basically see all of the, uh, you know, the Ethereal Summit and all of the um, Consensus 2017 footage only because of him. So give him some mass props, guys. Make sure you uh, donate and subscribe to him as well and Help, help, help a brother out out there because uh, he's the inspiration for this channel and I owe him a lot and I want to make sure we're taking care of him and supporting him and just because, just emotionally, you know, you give it your all, sometimes things don't work out the way that you want them to, but um, so let's let's put the whole Coindesk situation aside, like let's forget about them and what they did and whether you believe it was super wrong or right or whatever, let's just support someone in our community who, you know, is trying to do his best, trying to do the right thing, um, and trying to spread the good news, right? He does, a, he does a great service for all of us, help bring people into the community and help grow in this, so let's make sure we help a brother out. All right, so that's it, guys. Once again, I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you, and you have a great day. Bye-bye.